Hi everyone, this is a bit of a different topic this time. Uh, we're going to talk about renovations. I'm currently renovating a bathroom and you might be curious about a product that we call Red Guard. And this is what gives this signature color to my walls right now. This is a waterproofing membrane that you just roll on your walls and that provide you with a waterproofing that you would typically require when you build a shower, just like this one. So let's take a look at this product and uh, I'll show you how it's going. It's very easy to put on, a very good DIY project. I'll show you how that's going on my end. All right, so let's take a look at the product itself. It comes in this bucket. Uh, this is a, a small pail that's a gallon, right? One year's gallon. Uh, read the instructions, but it's very easy to use. This gives you a pretty good coverage. In fact, the coverage is uh, mentioned on the back here. This is like super tiny, but it will give you the coverage in this little table. Right? So uh, if you are looking at a waterproofing membrane, this gallon should give you 56 square feet uh, of coverage. So uh, that's, it's very small. Can't really show you. That's actually French. Let me show you the English version. Uh, so that's about 3.7 uh, square meters. Right. So that's far enough for what I'm doing here. Uh, from what I've read on the topic, you need at least two coats. Um, I have put two coats already on my wall here, uh, and I'll, I'm just putting a third one just to be on the safe side. This gallon is particularly hard to open, and you'll see that. The product is actually pretty weird. So it's got this very uh, distinctive uh, color, and you can you can see actually that it's when it's wet, it goes on pink, and then as it dries, it turns red, right? This dark red, and that's what you see on my walls at the moment. But the product itself is this kind of a you know bubblegum, gooey texture, uh, and. It's kind of a, a little bit unsettling at first because I, I would have expected this to be a little bit more liquid, uh, but it's actually very easy to roll on. So I'm just gonna use this little roller. That's all you need really. I'm not even using a um, you know little uh, plastic tray here. I'm not even using this because ultimately you can easily roll into the pail directly and it's been working pretty well for me. So. I just put my roller into a plastic bag uh, because I knew I would be reusing it. I was going to take it out. The only thing that I've noticed is that, so this is a typical, you know, paint roller kit that you find at Home Depot. That was like eight bucks, right? So it's very inexpensive. The only thing that you need to be careful about is not to put too much of the, of the, the, the Red Guard product around your axle here, right? Uh, because it will gum up and ultimately you won't be able to roll on your walls anymore. Uh, so just be mindful of this. I'll show you how that goes onto the walls because I'm going to put another coat on and um, I'll start from the bottom. Uh, it's important to try not to put the product on your uh, uh, shower base, for instance. This is an acrylic base. It comes off pretty easily, but depending on the, on the substrate or depending on the surface, uh, that this actually goes on. It's recommended that you actually take it out right away if you uh, if you put some of that stuff in places it's not supposed to go. All right, so just keep that in mind. So let's take a look at the actual um, roll-on process. I'm just gonna readjust the camera real quick. There you go. And I'm gonna do just the bottom here, so you'll see it's super easy. You roll it in and. You can tell it's very sticky, right? It's got this kind of gooey texture, like I said earlier. So it's it's kind of a weird, uh, it's a weird product, really, but it goes on super easily. And you apply it on your wall, and you just roll it on. So in this case, I'm being careful because so it doesn't even roll nicely because it's so thick uh, that it kind of glides on the surface. Ultimately, it starts rolling. You can actually hear the difference here. And you just apply a nice coat on. So don't be shy, put a nice little coat, right? Don't, don't stretch it too thin. Again, the, um, the idea here is that you actually, um, you actually create a waterproofing uh, 
you know, uh, membrane, right? You, you just roll it on. Similar to when you do roofing, you would be using a nest felt based or you can use a rubber based uh, type, of, type of membrane that comes on with a roller. This is kind of the same concept. And you might actually notice some differences in the, the different colors on my wall right now. That's because of the substrate that's behind it. I have backer board behind this, so it's a waterproofing, uh, a waterproof cement board. Depending on what you put on, you will have different colors. I did use some regular mud to do the uh, the seams with uh, uh, some uh, um, um, fiberglass ribbon on my seams, and I used some regular mud, which was white, and that's the reason why you see some areas that are actually whiter than others. But ultimately, when you put the first coat on, you should roll one way. The second coat on goes the other way. And I'm putting a third coat on, which I'm rolling the same way as the first coat. And uh, that basically ensures that you have uh, coverage in, uh, in all the little you know, crevices and little areas that need to be covered. So very important with this product, make sure that you actually go into the seams and the corners. Uh, because ultimately you want to create this waterproofing um, uh, you know, uh, resistance and it's very uh, critical that you actually have a consistent uh, coat, right? Uh, so if you have low walls and if your surface is porous or if you have some tiny walls or tiny areas that uh, uh, you notice looking up, up, up close uh, are not covered, make sure that you, you cover every single spot, right? And especially in this particular shower, I have a, a niche, so a little alcove where all the, the, the shower products will go. You want to make sure this is actually properly waterproofed. Ultimately, it's just an additional, um, it's mandatory really when you think about it, but it's an additional protection in case your grout would be porous or if you would have water uh, sipping in between your tiles that provides the waterproofing on your wall, which is also technically waterproof, right? So it's that really ensures that you have proper waterproofing protection for your shower. So I'm just gonna roll this on. Uh, I will speed up that part of the video because it's not really super exciting, but that's gonna take me a little while uh, to go over it. And uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll uh, resume uh, later. In the niche, it's particularly important to make sure you have good coverage. So make sure you go in every single of the angles. Um, I'm actually going to put a little bit more here, especially at the bottom. Obviously, there could be some water accumulation at the bottom. Normally, and as you always should really when you build a niche like that, you really want this to be sloped uh, towards the outside or towards the inside of the shower, towards the outside of the niche. And that's to uh, prevent water from pulling in this area, uh, which again could create some, some issues on the road where uh, the water could actually ultimately seep in if you don't have proper water. So this is particularly important for this area. Um, I've actually put at least four coats here, uh, possibly even five. Uh, and that's for that very reason. Right? Is you want to make sure that this is uh, properly sealed. Um, so just keep that in mind. Right? If you have a shower or if you have a bench or if you have any kind of structure, 
in your shower, make sure that you spend some extra time in this particular area. Um, also, one more note, try not to put that stuff on, on your skin or on your hands. It actually is quite sticky and it's hard to take out. Uh, so they actually suggest to use gloves, like a natural uh, gloves or a vinyl latex if you're not allergic. And uh, just make sure you, you wear proper protection to do this. Uh, because it is pretty sticky. It is uh, some sort of a rubbery membrane at the end, so it will adhere pretty well on whatever you put this on. Surprisingly, when you touch it, it's got this, uh, it's got sort of a grit to it, right? Uh, and I will get back to this in, um, at the end of the video because you need to be careful about what you will be using as a um, mortar uh, to, to actually uh, put your towels on this. It's a bit of a different type of mortar. If you use your standard mortar, you will run into problems uh, because this requires a specific type of mortar to put your tiles on top of it. Um, so just keep that in mind. It's obviously very important uh, if you don't want your entire shower project to turn into a total failure because your tiles are falling off. There are actual warnings on the, uh, on the bucket uh, that states that um, you should be using the right uh, type of, uh, of mortar when you install your tiles. So obviously something really important to keep in mind. As you can tell, I'm really not sparing the product. I have a lot of it um, and I should really be using a good portion of this bucket uh, for this project. This is about two and a half meters tall, eight feet, right? Eight feet by eight feet. This is about one meter, a little less than a meter here, 36 inches, 32 inches here. So I should be using a pretty good part of this bucket, probably about half of it. Surprisingly right now, I haven't uh, even come close to this. Uh, I don't know why, uh, but I, I think with three coats, I should be pretty safe uh, on the, uh, the amount of product that I'm actually putting on the walls. Uh, so, I will, um, I will probably stick to that and I should be fine. I mean, you need to do a close inspection and you really want to do a close inspection of your walls. Make sure that you don't see any little pits or any little holes or any cavity or anything that could be created because of the, uh, the nature of the wall you're growing this on. As long as you do this and you, you, you're, you, know, you have a, a seamless and consistent and smooth surface uh, that doesn't show any holes or any gaps, you'll be okay, right? So uh, I, I think I just will have some left over of that product, which is fine because I will probably have more projects down the road that could be using this, uh, this product. So as I said earlier, the product, as you can tell, is pink in the bucket. Uh, and as you roll it on and as it dries out, it turns red, this uh, pretty bright red, right? Uh, so definitely something to, um, to keep in mind. If you keep rolling on the same area as, as the first layer actually dried out, as you will see, it is gonna turn pink again. Uh, so it's a, good, it's a good system because it really allows you to see where you applied the product and where, where you haven't yet, right? But as you can tell, it's a pretty quick process, right? So I'm just gonna grab my uh, little stool here. that particular corner I'm almost applying it as a ribbon of um, or bead of caulking right so that ensures that there is product and waterproofing um, 
into the seam of my, my two walls. And that's a particular, um, it's, a, it's an important area, right? Uh, because your grout will not get to that section normally. Uh, you will actually end up having caulking in that particular corner. Just to factor in any kind of um, material or expansion of the material that you're using, uh, you normally never grout that, uh, that corner. Right? Uh, you put some caulking in there. So in this particular case, having the waterproofing membrane also applied in a similar fashion is probably not a bad idea uh, because it does, it's kind of rubbery in texture as I mentioned earlier and that allows uh, for not only proper waterproofing but it also allows for the uh, contraction and um, expansion of the material in that, uh, in that particular corner. Obviously, the upper area is probably not as critical as the bottom because you will never get any kind of water accumulation up here. Uh, but at the same time, you do have some water vapor um, and steam that typically gets towards the top of the shower. So you want to have waterproofing over, obviously. Um, and that's what I'm doing now. I'm trying not to get too close to my ceiling, which is white, and I run out of uh, masking tape, unfortunately. Otherwise, I probably would have used that, save me the trouble. But um, yeah, again, towards the very, very top, it doesn't really matter as much because my tiles will come all the way up to the ceiling. So there you go. That's pretty much done. Uh, Again, it's a very easy process, very quick. Um, I'm stopping right at the edge here where my shower wall will be. Um, there will be a aluminum frame shower that's going to go there with the door on the front. So I don't need to go beyond that, really. Um, my tiles will extend a little bit will, and will be probably lined up with the base. Um, I'm still yet to do that, but that's the next step. I might actually put even another coat tomorrow, I'll see, just to be on the safe side, but as far as this is concerned, that's pretty much done. So as you can tell, it's very simple, right? I try to keep the area here clean, put in a little plastic bag, a little ziplock if you have one, if you want to reuse it. And you might want to keep your roller a little wet, uh, so that it doesn't actually dry out. Uh, but this actually was uh, this one was actually in this one plastic bag for copper base, and it didn't, you know, it didn't really move. Got a piece of tape on it, a masking tape that I'm gonna reuse, and uh, I'm actually put another coat tomorrow. Make sure this is wet, right? You want your roller to be wet, uh, similar to when you're doing paint, uh, so that it, it doesn't dry out too quickly, um, and. Uh, Try to actually roll it onto itself here a little bit. There you go. So you want to squeeze as much air out of this as you can. There you go. Done. So that can be reused now. I'm going to take this out. Um, there is a bit of a smell with that product. So it's not necessarily present. In fact, they highly suggest that you have a proper ventilation and aeration in the space that you're painting simply because at the end, um, it is a chemical product, right? So you wanna make sure you're not breathing this for too long um, and make sure you close the, um, you close your pail back correctly, right? Uh, so I will talk in a moment about uh, what I'm using as the, um, the mortar uh, or the thin set to actually put the tiles on. It's very important that you actually use the proper one again because otherwise if you use the wrong one, um, the, the, the thin set will not be able to cure, will not be able to dry out because this is waterproof, right? So the water that's gonna actually um, get out of your thin set as it cures will have nowhere to go and it's gonna take weeks to dry out if it ever does, right? And you will actually not get a proper adhesion 
to uh, the substrate or to your walls. So you need to use a specific type. I think it's it's um, unmodified. I will take a look because I have the bag in the next room uh, and give you some pointers on this. Uh, that's advice that I got directly from the um, the store that I got the product from, and they insisted that I had to use that one and not the regular one. So. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it, right? Even if you have some little imperfections or uh, drips or, you know, uh, it's fine, right? Because ultimately you will have your thin set on top of this, uh, so which is typically an eighth. Uh, so you'll be fine. You, you, even if you have some imperfections, that's completely acceptable. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we're ready to move to almost to the next phase. I might put another coat on tomorrow and then move to the actual tiling phase. So. I hope this was helpful. I will add a little comment about the thin set so that you know which one I'm using and the, the one that I was recommended. Following up on the uh, Red Guard review, I wanted to touch on the mortar that was uh, suggested to use to install your towels on top of the waterproofing membrane. This is the product that I was recommended. I uh, bought this from a Home Depot. It's not that expensive. And it's also made by custom, right? And that's really usually the best guarantee that the products uh, will work together is when they're made by the same the same company. It's called Megalite. Uh, this is apparently more of a large format tile mortar. Uh, the, the tiles I'm installing are smaller. They're um, uh, picket tiles. So they're about 13 inches long by uh, three inches wide. But the actual mortar itself uh, can be used for a number of different uh, applications. In this case, as uh, you will see actually on this uh, screenshot, uh, it needs to meet some requirements, uh, some ANSI requirements. Uh, if you look at the spec sheet um, of that particular product, it does actually meet or exceed these requirements. So uh, this uh, product is actually great when it comes to installing this on the Red Guard uh, membrane. Very similar to your um, normal, uh, normal uh, products or thin sets, right? Uh, so all the instructions are on the back, very easy to use. Uh, and the, you have the guarantee that the tiles will actually adhere to the Red Guard uh, more, um, uh, membrane, which is really what you need to pay special attention to. Uh, be very careful, right? Uh, make sure you use the right product. Again, I suggest using this one. This is the one I was recommended, made by Custom, uh, which is the same company that makes the, the Red Guard, uh, and you should be um, you should be um, pretty safe on uh, installing your tiles and completing your shower project. So good luck with that. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. And um, yeah, um, hope to see you soon again uh, for another video. Bye for now.